you get yes, that other I got the other well. facts. I got the other facts, and I've posted them both up on Yahoo and the Skype group. And uh, the people on the call I, I came on and on because I, I, I basically got it up there about 30 seconds before the call, so they're, they're probably all getting it. I know Kirk is, is getting it. Okay, yeah. Go ahead and get it downloaded. I'm headed over to the other place, so uh, it'll be a little noisier. So I'll, I'll just uh, wait until I get over to the other place before I start talking. But go ahead and make okay. sure everybody that comes on gets those uh, files downloaded because I'll be going over them. Try and print them out, and uh, then you can sort of highlight them or circle uh, some of the words as I go through them. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Really you, can re- you can record while I'm not on the line. There might be some good shit that comes on there, Tom. A- actually, Just they were all off. Record me. They, they were all off getting the... Uh, uh, stuff and I was printing mine out, okay. so there, there was actually basically silence while we were all getting ready. So the documents okay. are up, Tom. Yes, the documents are up. Okay, I looked and I didn't see them. I'll go look again. I have, I, I have a total of seven pages on one download. Yeah. Right, that's yeah. the ecclesiastical quick claim deed. Well, that is. That is about three documents in one. Four pages are definitions. One page is uh, uh, basically giving you an example of your different uh, persons operating within your ecclesiastical society, corporation. And then the third one, or the top one there, is a quiet claim deed, okay, an ecclesiastical quiet claim deed. And then the second page of it is uh, sort of the instructions that sort of go along with that. Okay. So that's the only file that I need to download, right? Well, that, and there's another eight-page document that Tom should have posted up of word definitions. Yes. It got posted up a couple minutes later. Yeah, I only got the one that posted at 7.48. I'm not seeing anything else. Well, I'll refresh your email. You saying it's not up there? No, I've got the root of partition definitions and the bills and equity court doc on the perpetuity file. Yeah, well look at the look at the dates when they're posted, okay? I don't know why you posted them under the title or name, Tom, so uh, well they're they're in the perpetuity folder. I, I just looked. I don't see it. Oh wait, I didn't hit the save button. Okay, it's off. The definitions are now posted on Yahoo. They're also posted in the Yahoo group. I'm in the Skype group. And I posted on that other site that you have. No, I haven't put them on the backup yet. On that e e corns whatever whatever it is. Econcurrent dot com slash divine files. So there's definitions. I can, put them, and then, I can put them up there right now if you want me to. Yeah, just in case somebody comes on that basically wants to download okay. from there. I'll do that right now. So it's the definitions and another uh, addition to the writ? Yeah, and I would print those things out. So basically, as I go through these and try and explain what's going on here, okay, what we did last week is not entirely wrong, okay? It just needed a little more beefing up uh, to go in there. We were right in addressing some of the things, but uh, this is more powerful because uh, one of the key things is we needed to have the right title. You're not an executor, okay? So you do not want to be an executor. So if you have an executor stamp and you've been using that, throw it away. That's what I did with mine. I reverted back to the tribunal, two out of three stamp that I was working with about four or five years ago.
and you can even basically go and get a rubber stamp made up that says basically the same thing. Self-inking or whatever. And those are cheaper than getting an embosser. But they'll work just the same. Okay, all the files are up to read concurrent. Okay, how many people you got on there now, Tom? Eleven. Okay. Okay, everybody got the documents downloaded, especially the uh, quiet claim deed, the ecclesiastical quiet claim deed? Yep, I do. I want to hear 11 people speak up and say that they've got it. Okay. I don't see the deed. What? I said I didn't see, I don't see the deed. It should be ecclesiastical quick, quick claim. claim deed at the very top. And that's the title of the file. And there should have been in that package seven pages. It's in the Yahoo group and in the Skype group. And now up on the concurrent. Oh, Everybody got it? Yes, I've got it. I got it now. You got it? Yes. Okay. Well, that's two or three I've heard from. thought there was 11 on the call. I know Harold can't get it. Right, right. You're on the call, aren't you, Harold? He mutes out, but he's on the call. I don't know. It's Jeff. Huh? I'm on the call. Okay. Jeff, Bill, I don't know whether they're on or not. Uh... Uh, the names here are Good Vibe Experience, Wireless Caller, Kirk, Emil Hoffman, Stolarshik, Kali, Thomas Eddy, but I think that's Nancy, Tawana. Kirk, that's Stolarshik? It. Yeah. yeah. That's Greg. That's Greg, okay. And I didn't, I didn't see the, uh, for, the new uh, document this time. Where'd you look? On uh, Yahoo and uh, Skype. They're in both places. They, they got there uh, right around 8 o'clock. Huh. That's weird. Yeah, well, go in and do a refresh. And, uh, yeah, I did. That. I, I actually closed it out and reopened it, you know, both Skype and uh, the Yahoo group and Nothing, nothing yeah, it should be in that last folder that Tom put up on the Yahoo. Perpetuities? Program. Yes. Yeah. Yes, that's what I looked in. And the only thing that's there is the last one before the new ones. I we just did it twice, and I just did it again just now. Yeah, well, there's check the dates, okay? Scroll down through the dates when they're posted. Yeah, there's I got two of them posted today. Yeah, every time yeah, I go in here, it it's always shows me the new one. 
right on top with the okay, big right. Okay, so you have it you have it sorted in reverse date order. Where it shows up at the new one on top, yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah. I mean, still, yeah, I'm, I'm, Paul, I've got the, I'm thinking he's talking about the writ of partition definitions. I've got that. The, um, the bills and no. equity, the court doc, I've got that. But that's, those are the top two documents that are showing up in the files in the Yahoo group. Yeah. The the folder in the Yahoo group is the private homeland something folder. Oh, that's what I uh, you're right. I put it in the wrong folder. Private homeland documents. I'll move it there. I'll, I'll put them in the right folder. You do what I do sometimes, Tom. Get ahead of yourself. <laughs> well, the, the page jumps around in my browser, and sometimes I get uh, it wrong. Okay, there we are. You're right, guys. I'm wrong. Well, at least we know when they're not yeah. keeping it from us. <laughs> okay. Yeah, you can just cut and paste those out of there. Here's the crazy. I'm just going to leave them there and delete them later. I'm just pu- uploading them new, and now I'm just screw with it. Yeah. Okay, the quick claim deed is up there. Okay. The definitions are up there. Got it now, for sure. Okay. okay, so now everybody should know where they're at. <laughs> okay. Hopefully you've downloaded them, and so we can go through these, okay? One of the key things here, when we first went over some of this stuff last call, was that we are have a T-R-E-S, F, first word, F-A-C-I-U-N-T, second word, colleglium. And basically when you check out, the definition of that word or phrase, and then it, go check out collegium. You find out that collegium is also a corporation, a college, or an ecclesiastical body. Well, an ecclesiastic, when you go into it, then you find out that basically it is a church. An ecclesia is a church, and the ecclesium uh, is the religion of the church, okay? And so everybody was born as a temple, their own church. Your body is the temple for your spirit, okay? Your God of understanding. And everybody's going to have a different God than everybody else because you're all going to have a different set of beliefs and understandings at each different point in time. So therefore, you are an individual church, an ecclesia church. And you're a tribunal, okay? Because uh, for that T-R-E-S, F-A-C-I-U-N-T, collegium, it had to have three to set up the corporation. And basically that is the spirit, your father, the son, who is your right-hand working person, and then a fiction, okay, which basically they call the Holy Ghost. Now, what has taken place is that your Holy Ghost, which was your uh, also prodigal son, Okay, just like in uh, the story, the prodigal son in the Bible has basically taken the assets of your inheritance and placed them over, and he went over and became the grantor over with uh, these secular uh, promissory governmental Assurance promisers, and it's assurance, not insurance. And we were supposed to be the assured. We were supposed to be the grantee, but they set it up in a situation 
that basically all of this stuff was being held in uh, servility. Okay, I think I pronounced that right. S E V E R A L T Y. And basically that placed it into an inalienable condition, meaning that basically nothing can touch it. We can't pull it out or anything while it's in that condition under the control of the uh, grantor. Now, the grantor had a life expectancy per the Constitution of 21 years for the certificate of live birth uh, assurance contract or uh, sort of like an uh, insurance policy. This assurance, assurance policy was per the Constitution of the United States of America, and it was only supposed he was only supposed to be able to operate in the secular world until he came of the age of 21, and then he dies. That's why all of the stuff that you get in the mail from these uh, governmental agencies is in all capital letters, because he is dead. Your prodigal son is dead. And he became a separatist from our ecclesiastical uh, tribe, or ecclesia tribe. Now, he's dead. So now he's a testator standing over this deed, this promissory, this assurance promissory note in severity, deed of partition. But he's dead. So he's the testator. Well, and his will is also controlled by the Constitution of the United States of America. That's his testator's valid and implied will. See? People don't know what all that Constitution entailed. Now, they had to add the Bill of Rights because basically it was not entirely obvious of what was supposed to take place at the age of 21. That's why they basically have at least 9 and 10 in the in the Bill of Rights, but they also have the first one, the enactment clause, in that the government cannot enact another religion and force it down our throats. See, that's what the Bill of Rights, there's more to them than just what everybody reads out there in the process. And even James Madison basically at first didn't want to have them in the Constitution, but it took uh, Thomas Jefferson to basically persuade him to put them in. See, a lot of people don't know exactly all what was going on back and forth between a lot of the people that were writing the Constitution and setting this whole thing up. They couldn't make it perfect the first time. They had to sit there and basically try and correct some of the items that basically they overlooked. Moses. How many times did he go to court with the pharaohs before they finally let him out? Everybody thinks he's such a great person. Hell, he's gone to court just about as many times as I did. Daniel, the same thing. He didn't hit a home run the first time he went there. Jesus, the same thing. 
he didn't hit a home run the first time. He had to go more than once. These guys were not perfect. Like everybody tries to make them out to be. No one on this earth is perfect. You have to have the fortitude, the stamina, to keep on target and to keep going. Due diligence. And basically, what was the word that was in there last week that I tried to... Uh, vigilant, okay? You have to be vigilant in your efforts to get this done. You don't get something done right away. You don't hear from them like within 24 hours. You know that something wasn't quite right. And one of the big things is on that first line on that ecclesial uh, quiet claim deed. Okay? It says, I, the ecclesia, tribal executory executorial trustee well you go to the definitions that I have there about and that's uh, the one that has the eight pages to it okay uh, let me pull that up The one that begins with assurance, assurable, at the very top. Okay? You scroll down through that, and uh, basically uh, you'll see that some very interesting words there. Okay? Uh, Should study them all, okay? Deed of release, okay? Uh, that is uh, what we're looking for. We're doing a deed of release as a quiet claim deed. And basically the grantor, but now he's a testator, has to release that to the grantee, us. But he's no longer there and he can't speak up because he's dead. So we have to bring in, and I think it's on the very last page, executorial trustee. Now, it's the next to last definition on page eight. Mm -hmm. A person who who is executor of a decedent's estate, but is given powers and duties as a trustee in reference to a Testamentary trust created by will beyond the powers and duties of an executor. This executorial trustee has more powers than an executor. So all the stuff that we've been trying to go in to court acting as the executor and it didn't work Well, it was because we weren't coming in as an executorial trustee over this dead account. See, a trustee can draw funds from the account where an executor doesn't have that power. Hmm. And then... Instead of putting signature on your documents, you put witness my hand. That's the formal clause 
indicating a signature. Then you have your two witnesses. Okay? And basically, per that second document in that first seven pages there, I have the different Ecclesia persons. Ecclesia, tribal, parson, tribal elector, tribal dean, tribal executorial trustee, tribal creditor slash grantee, tribal clergyman, tribal warden, tribal curator, tribal constable, ecclesiastical officer, notary, etc. You can come up with any titles you want to in your church. Hell, the government creates new offices all the time. And then your Ecclesia, tribal prodigal son, and a separatist, he's dead per the secular constitution of the United States of America. He died at the age of 21. Now, for a military person, we created a second prodigal son at the age of 18. And his life expectancy was only for seven years until the age of 25. So now they're testators. They're both dead. And they're dead by the declaring of the law. See, you don't know how the Constitution worked for you, and then basically we didn't see how to come about taking these things out. And they, the sure as the hell, weren't going to give us a hand in trying to uh, bring this about. So, if you go over this, I mean, go over those definitions and basically, uh, like the quiet, try and go over this uh, quiet deed. I tried to lay it out, and basically you can turn around and use this same one for your DD-214. Just modify it appropriately. And then for the baptismal. And basically you would put down, uh, like in where I have the state of Iowa, secular government, as the assurance promiser agent working for the United States Governmental Corporation, the deceptive promiser, okay, you would put in, uh, like, the uh, Episcopal Church, uh, the Roman Catholic Church, as the assurance promiser agent, and then the Church of Rome as the main corporation, the deceptive promiser. And what they took with the baptism, they took your original sin, your original debt. And that was an inheritance from Mother Earth that was supposed to be given back upon your death. But they came in and took that original debt away from you. No, that's your debt. You get that back. Because that is also assets attached to it. And basically, the Church of Rome has been using that as collateral for their benefit. All of these promisers have been holding our assets for 
their beneficial, beneficial usage, just the same way an insurance company does with a whole life insurance policy. You give them the premiums for the whole life. Now, basically, they block you from taking that out. But in a, a whole life insurance policy, you can withdraw some of the funds, but they make you pay them back and also just pay them back with uh, an interest. Just like what the Social Security Administration tried to get me to do uh, about three weeks ago. They said, well, if you want out, you're going to have to pay us around $4,500 back. I said, well, that's bullshit. That was mine to begin with. Why should I pay you a one damn thing? But see, that's how these guys, they operate this assurance the same way they do the insurance companies. And they all have either assurance adjusters or insurance adjusters working for them. To try and get as much away from us, and that's all their bar attorneys and bar personnel. They're really assurance adjusters, and they get a bonus for every time they mess with us. And get us to pay out of our back pocket. So, there's a lot of words here that basically you need to go through. Okay, that one four-page document was pretty much all about your uh, religious church positions, parson, particle, uh, parish, parish church, parish councilable, uh, councilable, uh, parsonage, uh, pastor, preacher, rector, rectory, minister, Clergy, secular. Secular is in the other world, okay? In the temporal world. The temporary world. That you are in in the world of the spiritual world. Because you have the Father. Your spirit. And your spirit will live on. Okay? Clergy. Clergyman. One of the clergy. Now, you go down through there, and basically you're going to find, uh, where now? Yeah, here it is. Benefit of clergy. The exemption of clergymen from trial or punishment for crime in or at the hands of the secular courts. In other words, the secular courts cannot attack you under their uh, item unless you're a 501c3 church. Because the states do not have control over the ecclesia. And that was in last week's uh, documents that I posted up there, I'm pretty sure. Okay. And then blasphemy. 
See, this works now for us because what are they doing when they bring charges against us? They are blast performing a blasphemy against our beliefs, our religion. Dean, canon, ecclesia, ecclesia, ecclesiastical officer, okay? Also known as a dignitary, a priest, a canon, canon, a, a, a law, a church officer who took revenue from conducting service. Well, basically, if you're a clerical person working out of your church and you take revenue, you're conducting a service. So you're a canon. And see, now all of these items that we were trying to get to Start falling into place. Okay? And then also on that eight-page document, there is one heck of a lot of words there, and I tried to highlight several. Now, one of the key things, we've been looking for a writ to basically put to the court that would make them move. (laughs) Okay? None of these writs that we've done out here will make them move because they're for the secular person and they're treating us really now when we try and do these writs as a church. And those writs do not apply to the church. So that's why they don't recognize us. But there is one writ, and it's not under writs in the dictionary. The word is three words. First word is S-I-N-E. Second word is A-S-S-E-N-S-U. Third word is C-A-P-I-T-U. L I a writ for a church corporation to recover its lands which had been wrongfully conveyed. That second registrar, the certificate of live birth, was a wrongfully conveyance. It was not really conveyed by our guardians. Okay? It was conveyed because basically... No one in our church stood up and stopped our prodigal son from taking off and doing a separation from us into the secular world. That's what happened. So you can't blame your guardians for this entirely. If they would have had some knowledge and understanding, they might have been able to give a hand in stopping this. But they were not the instigators of it, okay? The instigator was this agent, and basically they presented it to us, and we did not refuse it.
That's the problem. In a lot of cases out here, they do presentations to us, and if you don't refuse those within three days' time, then it stands as accepted. But that's the writ we've been looking for. And then also that we are a church. And our prodigal son committed a mortal sin against our church. And that is a sin that we have to forgive. And we have to give him peace. A peaceful rest. And come in as this executorial trustee and transfer that deed back over to the grantee who is the original uh, receiver of the original granting to begin with. Our proctor or our parsonage person. Now, here's one for most people that have a mortgage. It's called dead pledge. Hmm. A mortgage, the property mortgage, it was called a dead pledge because the rents and profits of it did not go towards the discharge or payment of it. Hence, it yielded nothing to the mortgagee and was, in that sense, dead. That's the signature that's on the left-hand side of the mortgage contract. The dead pledge signature. Hmm. Therefore, none of the rents or profits of that item went to pay for it. Even though you came in as the creditor on the right-hand side initially to give them authorization... But see, you have to know how to work around these things, and then basically you do a uh, title, uh, a quiet uh, claim transfer. And since our person is dead, you're transferring it there over to now to the grantee. Okay. And you basically now, as the executorial trustee, you come into the court, and now, as the executorial trustee, you have the power to demand from that mortgage company to bring all their documents in to prove their claim. Where if you don't use that title, you don't have the power. You're just a crybaby. Three things that need to be on this, Doctor. Remiss, release, and quiet claim. Now, in a release, okay, 
for that certificate of live birth, for that DD-214, for that baptismal certificate. The word release is to be stamped or written across the face of that instrument, that bill of lading. It signifies that the carrier or the promiser is exempt from his common law liability as a promiser of the assurance is no longer obligated. And you'll find that in the word release. But that's what we have to do on those titles. We have to come in and then we will sign them as the executorial trustee. Sign and date them. Say that the assurance promiser is hereby released from all obligations. That is not surrendering the assets of this document. That is being conveyed conveyed by the quiet claim deed. Or deed of quiet claim, however you want to look at it. Because that is transferring then conveying all the rights, title, and interest of the grantor to the grantee. We've had a state possession of some of this in the past, but we didn't have access to the whole thing. And that's what we need to get it to, is to the whole account. So I think that when you go through and read these definitions and then you'll basically some of them go back and forth to other ones. That's why uh, these words are not in alphabetical order. Because I started going through one and then basically I got into another word that I underlined, highlighted and underlined and pulled that one down to take a look at it. And said, hey, that one basically fits also into this process. Willful violation. A deliberate and purposeful failure to comply with a statute. Well, that Constitution is a statute. It's the major statute that's out here. And basically, they have not been fully complying with that because we did not come in and know that that was what it was supposed to be doing. Even though they send all of our stuff uh, from the IRS and everything else with our fictional person in all capital letters. He's a dead man. But we did, and we tried to claim that, but basically we were not claiming it in the right way. And like I said, Moses didn't hit a home run the first time he went into court. Daniel didn't hit a home run the first time he went into court. Jesus did not hit a home run the first time he went into court. They all had to go back more than one time. So they were not perfect. We don't know how many times Moses really went into court, but we know it's quite a few. Daniel went into court quite a few times. 
Jesus went into the temple quite a few times. So we know that these guys were not perfect. And neither is Patrick Devine. Okay? That I'm following right in their footsteps. Because this is all the same process as what took place back then many years ago. They were fighting for the same thing that we're trying to fight for right now, too. I'm fighting for my church and my freedom and my liberties of my church. I'm also trying to set the groundwork for you people to get your freedoms and liberties and your church back on track. Mm -hmm. But that's up to you whether you want to believe anything that I just told you. But what we put in essentially last week was essentially right. But it needed a little additional clarification. It needed to have our Ecclesia Tribal Executorial Trustee come forward. That was the one person that we need to put out front here, especially to aid the testator to free him up, to forgive him his mortal sin, and grant him his freedom and peace, peaceful rest, so that he can get the hell out of this secular world and go out to his never-never land, just like in all the movies uh, of the ghosts movies that are out there. The movie Ghost, the Ghostbusters, all of those. Those ghosts were only hanging around because they had not been freed up. They were still under some control here by the secular government or by the secular people, not releasing them. And then when you release them and you get your stuff transferred over to your uh, Ecclesia tribal church, you are now totally exempt from... uh, the uh, secular world because if you go into uh, the one document there I have about uh, let me see where in hell is it church land land belonging to the church or to an ecclesiastical corporation or body more narrowly defined, for the purpose of a statutory exemption from taxation. So when you get your property, now it becomes tax-exempt from the statutory taxation. Just don't make it a 501c3 and join into the secular world. Church property, property which is primarily that is principally and generally used for religious purposes, but it will not lose its character as a as church property by some part of it being instantly used for some secular purpose connected with the church. So you can go to town and basically uh, make a delivery 
to the stockyard or to the warehouse or whatever to process your church goods. You're still driving a church vehicle, which is exempt from their statutory secular laws, codes of law. So I hope that these words help you a little. I know it's going to be a little while because it took me about uh, three days or so to go through all these words, too, to pull them together and then to try and write this uh, quiet, plain deed up. That took almost a whole day, but basically once I got it, then I saw, hey, this is pretty simple. And basically, then I made the other two up for uh, the DD-214 and just modified it appropriately. And the same thing for uh, the uh, baptismal record. Now, you could send all three of these into the Supreme Court also with the paper that we did last week. You can take a copy of that uh certificate of live birth, that DD-214, that baptismal record, and basically write across it that you are releasing the promisers of their obligations. For the baptismal record, you could take this title deed and the copy of the baptismal record and send it into of uh, the vicar general for your archdiocese or your diocese. I would go at least to the archdiocese. Okay, if not, right to uh, uh, the, uh, the cardinal there in New York at the St. Patrick's Trust Building. And then for your sec for your uh two uh like your uh DD two fourteen under that was initially set up under the selective service number, which was issued by a state representative, okay, a agent, okay, a promissory uh agent for the state that is working for the United States promissory, deceptive promisor, okay? These guys work just like an insurance company does, okay? Same MO, okay? If Bill's on the line, he can explain something about uh, uh, basically uh, being an insurance salesman. if you want him to. But uh, right now, we turn around, we can send a copy of these uh, into the state that we were born in to the Secretary of State for the Certificate of Live Birth. And then if you signed up in that same state, you would send that DD-214 with selective service number into that Secretary of State. But I'd also send it in a copy into the Supreme Court or to the Federal District Court if you've got some items there. And see, I've got one at the Federal District Court level under my DD-214. So basically, I'm going to uh, do uh, send them a copy of this quiet uh, claim deed and for the DD-214 and then also a copy of the DD-214 to where I'm releasing uh, the promisor, but all the assets are for that are to be transferred over to uh, 
my uh, pastor or uh, parsonage, uh, parson, over to him as he is now the grantee of that. In other words, it's getting returned to where the source really belongs. Now you can see why half of these movies out here, the movies in the dead world, that uh, even the good guys were running around in black robes. Because they were clergy. They were working for their church. Their beliefs. And see, that's what Neil kept having problems with, was trying to get his beliefs straightened out. To where he believed in himself. Okay, I've rambled enough, I think, and basically I know it's going to take you a little while to go through these documents, and you'll probably have some questions maybe tomorrow night. Okay. So, uh, but uh, if you yeah. got some now, go ahead and ask them, okay? I only have a small one. Uh, if uh, I don't have a DD-214, but I can still do the same process on just a selective service number, right? Yes, I'd send it in. Basically, just uh, write up a statement and say that if there are any funds here, that they are to be transferred over to uh, your person mm-hmm. as the guarant- as the grantee. Mm-hmm. Hey, you, you tossed out a lot of ideas here when, when explaining this, so I've got to go through the call and really get that nailed down. Thank you. Okay. Anyone else have something? No, i got to read through all this and wrap my head around it. Okay. Thank you very much, Patrick. You really gave us some homework to do here. Yes, thanks, Pat. Now, this uh, should uh, put the final icing on the cake. But, uh, yeah, right now, if you've got any problems, uh, make sure you get the understanding of these words, especially that uh, executorial trustee. See, that executorial trustee has all the powers, more so than an executor. Like I said, an executorial trustee can now basically do just about anything with those items. Hmm. He can override what basically the... uh, the dead guy had. Basically, the, uh, to where, uh, yeah, as a testator, he can override that inalienable holdings. He can make them alienable. He can make them usable. Is what I'm trying to get at. Okay? And then if they do not comply, then now they are in breach of uh, the Constitution, of the statutes. What what is that um, tribunal in Bosser? What does it say? What? Tribunal in Bosser? Yeah. Just basically, I've got, uh, uh, you could either put the Father, Son, Holy Ghost, or 
You can put uh, uh, the uh, the spirit, uh, the living, and uh, the ghost on there. Uh, however you want to do it. Uh, basically, make it up yourself. But then it's two out of the three out of your tribunal, your ecclesia tribunal. You could say two out of the three uh, clerical uh, persons of your tribunal, Ecclesia Tribunal. Anything you want, okay? Be creative. That's what you're supposed to be. You're supposed to be a creator, okay? Not a follower. You're supposed to create your own shit. Right. Most people do, okay? Because I don't see anybody going and shitting for anybody else. So you've got to create your own shit. <laughs> right. That's putting it bluntly. And I'm a very blunt person. <laughs> Best way. I try and make it as simple as possible so that basically you can get your mind wrapped around this a little quicker. Yeah, you do a great job, Pat, of explaining explaining it. Just got to make it sink in. Absorb. But see, yeah, all of this stuff, we've been, and I, and I found all this stuff out of the dictionaries. None of this came out of any codes or anything like that. Okay? And it's all Latin, right? No, it's not all Latin, okay? Some of it's in Latin, phrases and certain things, but uh, it's... Roman, okay, and basically what is this country founded upon uh, also along the Roman laws, which basically were founded on the biblical laws. People don't realize that basically the Bible was instrumental in setting up the Republic of Rome. Hmm. Okay? Yeah, they, just didn't, they just didn't come up with this shit on their own. Okay? The Greeks the same way. All of this stuff has been basically written pretty much the same down through the ages. The people have deviated from it by the the bankers coming in and polluting and deceiving the bankers and the religious and the lawyers and basically the scribes and the Pharisees, whatever you want to call them, basically have come in and polluted the real laws, the republic laws that are out here. And see, that's what we need to look at. It, it, And going through the dictionary, the dictionary also gives you history. Okay? So it's a historical book in words, giving you the history of how some of these words came about. One of the big ones is how all of the EX words came about. Roughly in the 13th hundreds, okay, under one of the kings there, they came in, they ran into a little uh, difficulty, and basically then later on, the lawyers and uh, the bankers came in and changed a lot of the wording around for their benefit, and one of the big ones was using all these EX words.
I can't remember where that, but uh, it was in the dictionary. They're talking about this. Hmm. And I mean, it really said that. Told Witch King and everything else, basically, that this was done under. So, like I said, there is history in the dictionaries. But to find out and to see that the Constitution is a will. It's the will of America. I heard somebody... Go ahead. I was going to say, I heard somebody um, the other night, I was watching a video, and he was teaching about law, and he said uh, the America word comes from the word America, meaning the Moors. Is that the is that true? No, that's that? not that's not what it means. It means a mare. Okay. Mm-hmm. Break the word down into three. Most big words like this, uh, you look for three words in them. Okay. So in America, you've got a mare. I can. Okay. Mm-hmm. Now, a mare is a prince or a of a sultan, a uh, god, or a, uh, what the hell is the other one? Okay, a mare. And basically, it really is emir, but it also, if you look it up in uh, uh, an old Oxford Universal Dictionary, uh, it'll have a mare in there. And that's where basically you can find some of these definitions. You have to go to uh, the civilian dictionaries. You're not going to find all of this stuff in the law dictionaries. But what I have here basically is all in the law dictionaries because it's got to be there. Now, it's not in all law dictionaries. That's why you need to look in more than one. But a prince, okay, of a sultan, a king, or a uh, sovereign. Let me see. The prince of a sovereign, a sultan, or a god. Okay, that was the three. And then basically I, and that is the individual. Okay? And then can, and that means one who has and possesses the knowledge of understanding. Mm -hmm. So that's what an American is, is a prince as an individual who has full understanding. And there are very few Americans in this country. Right. And that's the same thing that I did with Indian, okay? Broke that word down into... Uh, what it really means, okay? And I've posted that up before, so I'm not going to go through that. But see, that's what you have to do. You have to break some of these words down to find out how they were joined together. And then you'll see what they say, and then what, when you break those same, those words down, Is the definition really saying what that word is? Right. Okay. It's a game. Mm hmm. It's amazing how how all the those words interweave with each other, and they're they're trying to get you to understand, you know, how important we are, and you know how we. how we, over, you know, with the condition we're in, and how, you know, the, the words are there, the remedies there to get out of it, and it tells you how you you got in it, mm-hmm. and it's a, almost as if it's 
you know, a spiritual awakening in the words, helping you to spiritually awaken or raise your consciousness to understand like you're doing, understanding these words and putting them together and realizing that you've got to stand up like a man and face the fact that you have enslaved yourself to another and this, you, this is how you get out of it. Well, we're not enslaved, okay? That's the thing, okay? We basically have given in to the thing, <clears throat> but we can be free. Okay, as long as we understand that we're a church. When we start standing up as a church, as the pastor or the parson of our church, now they can't touch you under their civil codes. See, that's what I put up there. Hell, I listed ten individuals but they're all operating under the same name. You go into court. Well, which person do you want to arrest? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, good luck finding them, right? Yeah. He's over there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah here, here's my list of people. Which one are you going to arrest today? Well, basically the only ones they can touch is the secular, the prodigal son. And he's dead. But now you come in as your ecclesiastical or ecclesia tribal executorial trustee, and you have the power to demand all of the charges be brought forward in their openness. Proof. Valid proof that there is a valid charge. Because right now they're trying to charge one of your church members who is exempt. But they're trying to say that it's the dead person that really was driving the vehicle. Because he's the grantor out here. And he really didn't release that to you. But you can come in as the executorial trustee now and shove it down their throat. See, as the executorial trustee, you have the power to revoke a charge to dissipate a charge or to pay a charge. So now how would you go about that if I if I got a court member You just stand me? up and tell them that. Should I notify them first through a paper? Or um, What do you got? Uh, a friend of the court is sending me a charge saying I owe past due child support because I got fired from my job and uh, they want to collect thousands of dollars and telling me I owe it to them. So what I, I'm thinking, you know, I've been You do a quiet title or quiet claim deed for that uh, marriage certificate. Hmm. And, is it, even if we're divorced? Huh? If we're divorced? Yeah, they're still trying to use that marriage certificate there to get you to pay. Yeah, and I, I paid a lot, and they're still trying to get me to pay more. Yeah. And see, basically, you've got to identify that this was a, uh Ecclesia tribal divorce, that the state does not have control over your tribal personage, your clergy, and that your wife was part of your clergy at that point in time. And they have no say over this, but you have to get rid of all the secular documents. Because, what? basically, who was the one that was in marriage with the state? He's now dead. Mm -hmm. He's over 21, isn't he? Right. 
Okay? He's dead. He's the one that basically is holding up the payment from that assurance policy known as the marriage certificate. The marriage certificate was supposed to make the payment for the missing partner in the marriage. That's what, it was an insurance policy, but an assurance policy. See, the state can only issue assurance policies. They can't issue insurance policies. But they order you to get an insurance policy to protect their assurance policy, which they're out there writing bonds against that assurance policy using your assets. And they're the beneficiary of these assurance policies because they're the holders of the assets, just like a whole life insurance company is holding all of your assets that you paid in, but they're using them, writing bonds against them, and making money off them the whole damn time. So they're a beneficiary of those insurance policies, and you're getting paid shit. And then you're going to turn it over to some uh, nitwit when you die. That is total insanity. They've got their own shit to worry about. If you want to leave them something, leave them a donkey or something, a jackass. Really, you leave them a dictionary and maybe they'll learn something. Really? Everybody needs to sit down and read a damn dictionary and put this together. Yeah, well, just start taking some words. And basically, one word will lead you to another word. And uh, before the day's over, you'll probably have all the different uh, uh, letters of the alphabet uh, like in Valentine's, opened up, going through different words in each one of them. Yeah, they're amazing. I go through the words a lot, and uh, it's it's profound, the meanings and how it's perfect and how it, it's literally telling you everything you're saying. It's telling you plain as day and more. Mm-hmm. It's like swimming in knowledge, and it's it's all real and true, but nobody's yeah. seeing it because they're they're not looking. Now, it's just like a jigsaw puzzle, okay? You put down one piece, well, then you find the other piece that sort of interlinks to it. You put it down, and then all of a sudden you start, you're start you completing the puzzle. And that's what all this stuff is. It's a big puzzle, but it's a game. Yeah, and then you want them to see it, and then they don't see it. Uh, maybe they will, but hopefully they'll get to the point where they will understand what, what it's saying, but... You try to, you know, give them that document, and they look at it like, what in the world is this? Yeah, and see, but basically we had to find out what documents we really needed to come in with and where, who we were. And see, that's what nobody really understands of who they really are. You're a parson, okay, of your ecclesia church. You're right. tribal, right. and it's a uh, prodigal church pertaining to a parish. A parish is basically defined as a area, a, a local spiritual, a parish church. But a parish is an administrative district of a religious society headed by a priest or pastor. <laughs> And a parson is also a pastor. See how all these words start tying together, then? And telling you who you are. Yeah. 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 It's a 
Amazing. And then constable or constable, C-O-N-S-T-A-B-L-E, a public officer, a peace officer. Well, also, you can have your own, and see, just like going to the Indian Reservation, okay? You are an ecclesiastical tribal reservation. Okay? Okay? So you have the same thing. You're in charge when they come upon your church grounds. You can arrest them and hold them and lock them up. Wow. Just like a, somebody comes to try to deliver legal documents to you, they're trying to commit fraud. They're coming into your ecclesia, your you know uh-huh. your land and your property and. Now, uh, and trying to br- bring harm toward you by using your prodigal son against you, and now you, you I wouldn't right. I wouldn't go that far to arrest them and everything unless you had uh, more in your uh, group, okay? Because basically, your your tribal is only one person in most cases, okay? The only thing you would do as the council, you would lay the charges against them for their violation of your rights and put the charge to them. So you would make up an Ecclesia uh, Church uh, violation charges. A writ? No. Like explaining? No, you would make up a charge, a list of violations, like traffic. They've got them for uh, speeding. Okay, over 10 miles an hour, here's the ticket. Uh, over 20 miles an hour, here's the value for that one. For not wearing a seatbelt, here's the value for that one. Uh, for uh, no uh, brake lights, here's the charge for that one. I mean, see, you can make up your own charges for violations upon your church land. Wow. Yeah. I You've see. got the power now. And then you present them to these secular courts in equity. So would you present it to a, um, a record office or a court? You would present it to a court, to the clerk of the court, hmm. and let them take it to the prosecutor. Here's the charge. And basically, you can go down to the sheriff, and if they have violated something, you can put a charge in for the arrest of that person. But don't go there. Try and get this other shit through your mind first, okay? Right, right. I'm just trying to show you that you do have more powers than what you're ready to think in a church. And see, that's what everybody was missing. They weren't realizing that they were a church, an ecclesia. And then you make up your own documents. You have your own notary. You should be able to travel with your own documents, being under notary, Ecclesia notary, as a minister, okay? And people have gone without a driver's license, without a passport or anything like that, and gone across into Canada and keep on, the their minis- on their clergic, clerical uh Minister documents. Now, if you go overseas, you may want to take your document under your Ecclesia notary and take it to the Secretary of State and get it apostilled for basically going out of, of this 
nation into another nation. But as long as you're here on the mainland of the continent of America, you shouldn't need that. But in some cases, you may have to. You'll have to check with the consulates uh, of what their requirements are. And it's good to keep a um, flag and a Bible with you too, right? Huh? Is it good to keep yeah. a flag and a Bible with you? Well, you don't need the flag, okay? Mm-hmm. You wave a flag, and basically most people who wave flags get their asses in trouble. What about like a original Michigan flag, you know, the original? No, no, flag? just forget that, okay? Okay, okay. You just keep your church documents. Okay? Mm -hmm. Like I said, most people that start waving flags get their asses in trouble. What the hell? All wars, the first thing that's out there is some damn person waving a damn flag. What about an ID, like a national ID or something? You make up your own church ID. That's what I'm saying. And then notarize it. Okay. You list yourself either as the parson or as whatever office you want to be. And then you have your ecclesia, ecclesiastical notary. Sign it. And when you do that, you put your right and left index fingers down, and then you emboss or you put your stamp over that, your seal. And when you write your name, uh, first, middle, uh, colon, uh, or count, call in last name? It all. Take a look at that document that I put up there for your different ecclesiastical persons. Okay. You can have all the same name. How many movies out here have there been that basically in a secular society the people are all operating with the same damn name. But they all had different functions. And I know there's been several movies out there that were like that. The movies have told us more shit than what we really realize. The name is not the most important thing. The title is. the person, titles of office. Because it's the office that is basically doing the item. Okay? Any other questions? Anybody on the line? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. I didn't know whether my phone had dropped off or not. No, there's still 11 here. Okay. Okay, well, if there's no other questions, call tonight. Okay. 
Thank you very much, Patrick. Okay. We'll get right to it. Thank you, Tom. Okay, talk to you later. Uh, okay. okay. Sure. Bye. Bye. Bye.